Hello, my audio file friends, and welcome back to another Generation Behind Hi-Fi video. Well, I took your guys' suggestions from the last couple of videos that I've done, and I've purchased myself a brand new wireless microphone. So hopefully the sound quality is much better and there's no echoing. And I'm sure if it's not up to your guys' standards, you guys will let me know about it in the comments section. So I am excited to do today's video because as you guys know, we live in a high inflationary environment right now. It seems like everything is just crazy expensive. Everything from cars, houses, groceries, fast food, and even our precious audio equipment. I hear in some parts of the country, a Big Mac meal can cost as much as $20 right now, which just seems crazy to me. So I'm going to dedicate this video to my budget-minded audio files out there. Because boy, do I have a speaker for you. And that speaker is the Serwin Vega LA365. This is their flagship floor standing model, and you can purchase it for $349 each. And this speaker contains a couple of design techniques that really separate it from the competition. For example, right here we have the mid range driver, and what Serwin Vega has done is they have isolated the mid range driver in its own enclosure within the cabinet. Now, that's a design technique that's normally found on higher end speakers. They've also added bracing here and here to reduce resonance, and they didn't stop there. Um, I was quite surprised to see that they've lined this cabinet full of damping material. Now, I've taken apart quite a few of these budget-oriented floor-standing speakers, and the manufacturers cut cost at every corner they can. And normally, they don't have any damping material at all, and if they do, it's usually a small like 6 inch by 6 inch square. They glue it on the back wall and call it good. So I was quite impressed to see that they have lined it with that much damping material. The second thing that's really impressed me about this speaker is it seems Serwin Vega has developed a proper crossover to maximize the performance from these drivers. And you're probably thinking, it's a $349 speaker. How good can the crossover be? So like I said, I've torn down quite a few of these budget speakers, and in most cases, I find a basic first order filter. It's got electrolytic caps and iron core inductors on it. Well, Serwin Vega took a different approach. Judging by the component count, it appears that they're using either a second order or a third order filter, and it has multiple poly caps and multiple air core inductors. That's impressive for a speaker that's this affordable. So I guess what I'm getting at is, if you're one of those budget-minded consumers and you're looking for a good quality speaker that can deliver nice sound at a reasonable price, the LA365 is going to be a hard speaker to beat. And let me show you why. At $349 each, I think these might be one of the nicest sounding, extremely affordable floor standing speakers on the market. While some of the other brands who offer affordable floor standing models are using passive radiators in their designs to give the consumers the illusion of more drivers, Serwin Vega isn't doing any of that. All of the drivers in the LA365 are active. You get one 6.5 inch mid-range, a 1 inch silk dome tweeter, and two 6.5 inch bass drivers. Even the crossovers are one of the nicest that I have seen at this price point. It's pretty rare that I get impressed by budget speakers, but in my opinion, the LA365 has one of the best price to performance ratios that I have seen in this industry. And let me show you why. All of the drivers are held in by eight Allen screws. I don't think I've ever seen that many screws being used to fasten the drivers to the front baffle on such an affordable speaker. Usually in this price point, you get four or maybe six. After all of the screws are removed, there is a plastic beauty ring that needs to be removed before the driver will come out. So I got the mid-range driver removed. Now let's remove the tweeter and the bass drivers and see what they look like.
Wow. I can't believe the crossover on this thing for $349. One of the most overlooked items in budget speakers is the construction of the cabinet. The LA365 has a front baffle that is 5 8 of an inch thick, and they have even included a few braces throughout. Serwin Vega has even isolated the mid-range driver in its own chamber. This is a design technique that is mostly found in higher end speakers. By isolating the mid-range driver from the rest of the drivers, this will prevent coloration and improve mid-range clarity. Typically on budget price three-way speaker designs, all three drivers, the tweeter, mid-range, and bass drivers, will all share the same enclosure with no isolation between them. In this type of enclosure design, the bass driver or drivers can pressurize the enclosure to the point that the diaphragm on the mid-range driver is forced to be pushed out. This type of interaction between the bass and mid-range driver can cause unwanted excursion, which then leads to higher harmonic and intermodulation distortion. But with the LA365, you don't have to worry about any of that. Because like I said, Serwin Vega isolated the mid-range driver from the rest of the drivers. As I move my way down the cabinet, I can see that the tweeter and the two bass drivers share the same cabinet space. I also noticed several braces being used in the cabinet near the bass drivers, which is really nice to see at this price point. There is one brace between the two bass drivers and another one below the bass driver that is closest to the floor. These braces will help stiffen the cabinet and reduce resonance. The cabinet is also lined with damping material throughout, which is something you normally don't see at this price point. No doubt, Serwin Vega was paying attention to the small details in terms of cabinet construction. There are two ports on the back of the cabinet, and both have flared ends on either side of the port. Again, not something you see at this price point. Usually only one end of the port is flared on budget speakers, not both. During my extensive listening sessions with the LA365, I noticed the ports were as quiet as a church. I didn't hear any audible noise during any of my listening sessions. Both ports measured 7 inches in length and are about 2 inches in width. On my bench, the LA365 had a port tuning of 47 Hz. The mid-range driver on the LA365 has a stamped steel basket and a surround made from butyl rubber. The days of foam surround seem to be over in the eyes of Serwin Vega, which is a good thing. Serwin Vega doesn't specify the comb material, but it does appear to be made from paper from what I can tell. Serwin Vega is also venting the voice coil underneath the spider, which will help keep the voice coil cool during those long and loud listening sessions. The motor structure has a vented pole piece, which will help the trapped air behind the dust cap escape during those long strokes. The motor structure includes a pretty decent sized ferrite magnet plus an additional bucking magnet. All in all, not a bad driver from a $349 budget floor standing speaker. Now let's put this driver on the bench and measure its TS parameters. The mid-range driver has a resonant frequency of 57 Hz and a DC resistance of 4 ohms. Total Q came in at 0.7, which is pretty typical at this price point, and I wasn't surprised by this value at all. BL came in at 4.45 tessillimeters, and is also pretty average for this price point. Voice coil inductance came in at 0.289 millihenries, which is reasonably low. A speaker with high voice coil inductance can be a major source of harmonic distortion, and it can also impair transient response. So the lower the inductance is, the better. Now let's see how much the mid-range driver weighs. It came in at 2 pounds and 5.1 ounces. Appearance wise, the base drivers look identical to the mid range driver. The only difference I could find is the mid range driver has 4 ohms stamped on it, and both base drivers have 8 ohms stamped on them. I will talk more about the impedance mismatch later. The tech being used in the base drivers is identical to the mid range driver. The base drivers are venting the voice coil underneath the spider, and the motor structure is using a vented pole piece. They also have a butyl rubber surround, and the code material appears to be made from paper, just like the mid-range driver. I'm speculating here, but I think what Serwin Vega is doing by using two 8 ohm bass drivers is they are running them in parallel, which would reduce the total DC resistance from 8 ohms to 4 ohms. Another major benefit of running them in parallel means the total inductance of the drivers are significantly reduced, which in turn further enhances transient response and sound quality.
Now let's see how much the base driver weighs. And it weighs the same as the mid-range driver. Came in at two pounds and 5.1 ounces. Here are the TS parameters that I measured from one of the base drivers. The resonant frequency came in at 59 hertz and total Q came in at 0.83. The base drivers have a tiny bit more motor strength than the mid-range driver. BL for the base driver came in at 5.16 tesla meters. The tweeter from the LA365 is pretty impressive and is definitely one of the nicer tweeters that I have heard from this price range. It has a nice airy three dimensional quality about it that is not only smooth but also detailed. The tweeter is one inch in size and includes a dome made from artificial silk. Even the motor structure on the tweeter is pretty decent for this price range and includes a pretty large ferrite magnet. Now let's put the tweeter on the bench and see how it measures. The resonant frequency came in at 1104 Hz, but there is some cone breakup around 2500 Hz as shown by the smaller bump after the resonant frequency. I don't think this will be a problem because Serwin Vega probably crossed over the tweeter above 3000 Hz anyways. A general rule of thumb in speaker design is to cross over the tweeter at least 1.5 to 2 octaves above the resonant frequency. Obviously there are some caveats to this rule, but in most cases this is a good starting point. The terminal cup is held in by four 3mm Allen screws. My only gripe with the binding posts is that they are extremely close to each other, which makes it quite difficult to get your fingers in there to tighten them down. If you do get a pair of these speakers, get speaker cables that have banana plugs on them, so you don't have to fight with the binding posts. Now let's check the binding post to see if there is any ferromagnetic parts in the signal path. Oh, that's great. So we have nothing on the binding posts. Now let's check these uh, jumper plates. Nothing there, that's great. Oh, and then on the back. So on the back here we have uh, steel parts being used that the speaker cables connect into. And then also these nuts that fasten the binding post to the terminal cup are made from steel as well, so they are magnetic. I will leave uh, links in the description to replace these uh, nuts with non-ferromagnetic parts if you'd like to purchase some. Another thing that surprised me with the LA365 is that Serwin Vega wired the speakers using oxygen-free copper cable. This is quite surprising because most of the other brands are using copper clad aluminum in this price range, which doesn't have the same conductivity or durability as copper wire. I gotta give props to Serwin Vega for not cheaping out here. Us audiophiles who are on a budget, thank you. This is the nicest crossover that I have seen from a floor standing speaker that is this affordable. Normally at this price point you don't get this many components on the crossover board. Serwin Vega spent the extra money and installed higher quality components like poly caps and air core inductors. Electrolytic caps are typically the only cap that I find on crossovers from budget floor standing speakers. And judging by the component count, Serwin Vega spent some time designing a proper crossover in order to get the most out of these drivers. Simply put, I am very impressed by the attention to detail that was spent on this crossover design, considering how affordable these speakers are. Maybe it's just me, but I feel that in this high inflation environment that the LA365 offers quite a bit of value compared to the other brands that I have tested. At 698 a pair, you get a very respectable cabinet that is well braced and damped, a decent set of drivers, and a quality crossover that seems to be above the competition. If you saw my look inside video on the smaller LA165 bookshelf model, then you know the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. It's nice to see an American brand getting back to its roots and producing some quality products at very affordable prices. I have also heard Serwin Vega will be releasing a new higher end line of speakers called the LSD series. This new series will have real wood veneer cabinets and premium drivers too. I'm kind of anxious to see what Serwin Vega can develop with a bigger budget if their new budget friendly LA series is this good. And that's my look inside video on Serwin Vega's brand new flagship floor standing speaker. If you'd like to hear my thoughts on how the LA365 sounds, then check out my review video, which should be out next month. So long, and happy listening!